um, just to iterate on that. I don't believe you, Angel. Oh, Jurassic, the, the new Jurassic Park or the older one, sorry? I haven't, I don't think I have any of the Jurassic Parks. Kung Fu Panda 1 art book is really good. Uh, 2 is alright. Hey, what's up, Abro? Thank you for the follow. FX14, what's up? Can we show how we will be animating our animal career, please? Okay, so we, we've actually been doing dual streams with Abyss FX, uh, one of the members here from the lab workshop. And we have been showing him animating and explaining a little bit of the here and there and answering questions on our dual stream while, while I work on other stuff. Here, let me show you what that looks like, this stream. So see the right side over there where there's a conversation between me and, uh, and, and another artist? That's uh, taken up by Abyss animating on our other streams. Uh, so you might have to wait a little bit for us to upload that to our past, bra our past broadcasts. Or if you sub, you can watch all the past broadcasts that we haven't had time to upload yet uh, right away. If you really want to see all that stuff. The original shows back? Oh, cool, sorry. Hmm. Might have to check that out. Mega Brother, did I make that? Did I make what? That, yeah. And the stuff on the top right too. The animations for Four Unleashed? No, I was not an animator on the Forced Unleashed. Uh, we had, I think, three or four uh, really freaking awesome animators. Um, as far as I went with the animators, I would I would look at animations and uh, offer feedback and at meetings and all these things, especially for the, the key heroes that uh, I was sculpting as well. To make sure that their uh, their style and their stance, their idols, you know, all those things felt strong and representative of what we wanted the character to be. And uh, I think that oh, and the, as far as animation goes, uh, one some of the stuff that I really was close to was the Darth Maul fight scene. I choreographed the entire fight scene and uh, helped out with you know the movements and uh, the agility and the style for Darth Maul at the same time. And then the animators did their amazing job at actually animating it. <laughs> Soy bud. <laughs> He's not even here to uh, to really burn him with his with the chair jokes. <laughs> the clowning of his chair. <laughs> what was the what's the joke that somebody said last stream? His chair looks like a like a, a civil war veteran or something. <laughs> Uh, Bout, just uh, check out liveworkshop.com, dude. You can see an, uh, a whole bunch of progress for of how we go from start to finish on our, on these sets. So you can totally see that there for a whole bunch of different characters. Uh, if, uh, like I said, the, for the more recent stuff, you'll have to wait until we have time to upload it all to the website. But if you want to watch it right away, you can just sub up and you can watch all those past videos in, here in Twitch. Um, but eventually it'll be for free on the website, so you can wait if you want. It's fine. He made it from an abandoned mansion. Cloth from the civil war. The <laughs> bandage and shit. Oh man, I was laughing so hard at that joke that day. Holy crap.
Uh, I think this guy doesn't use any... Uh, uh, we don't really have any mirroring going on on that part. Uh, let's see, let's see... No, this guy's all together. It's just this guy's. And these guys that we reuse in other places. Oh, well, we can be just completely free with the rest of that. What kind of alphas and rips we add to this section. It's, uh, it's up for grabs! Maybe I build this back up a little bit. Start ripping it up over here, maybe. So this is kind of like my sketching a little bit for where I'm gonna have alpha maps. Start tearing the crap out of this escape. Oh, you said it was a bandage from the Civil War, yeah. <laughs> no, that's fucking hilarious. Lovecraft Attic? Oh, for about uh, Cthulhu? <laughs> yeah, that's enemies actually here from the lab workshop. But we feature a lot of other artists on the, on the front page uh, to give them more exposure and help them uh, Help people get votes on their sets, uh, and uh, hope, hopefully help them get their, their items into the game as well. <laughs> hey Thesis man, what's up? Most of your friends and you heard that the society didn't accept Forced Unleashed too well. Are you kidding, dude? It's the best-selling Star Wars game of all time still. Oh, well, there's that. Uh, I think people had issues with the sequel. And that was because we were forced, pun intended, uh, to, you, to finish the game in seven months. Because of political bullshit. So for seven months, dude, that sequel was freaking ridiculously awesome. Those games usually take about three to four years. Just a shame that you know people don't. I mean, and it's not it's not fair to you know have people expect to understand that, but. You know, people pay their their money for their full action. You know, adventure game. They expect it to, you know, be three years worth of work or at least a few. But we had seven months to do all the levels that we did, and we actually improved the gameplay quite a bit. The, the fighting, we were just not able to make as many levels or as many unique costumes or worlds as we would have loved to make. It was not. It was not on us. Oh, the PC was outsourced, man. We had nothing to do with that. I'm sure it had its bugs, its shares of bugs. I mean, I've heard that it does. But yeah, I mean, uh, we, we built the game for, for console. And then it was uh, external, some external studio did the conversion for, for PC. And did what they did. You know, honestly, I, I actually did run through the PC. Uh, I didn't finish it all the way through PC, but I, I didn't really run into any, like, game-stopping bugs myself. But, I mean, it's really random, and, you know, depending on people's machines and builds and whatever, I'm sure it has, like, a million different ways. 
and things that needed to be tested. I don't know, man. I don't tell you. All I can say is, uh, we, we built it for consoles, where it works great. This piece needs a little bit of a better shape. Oops. Oh, way. Uh, Susu50, thank you for the follow, man. Welcome. Continue to hide the seam line. And continue maybe the stitching down here. I'm not really done the stitching, but we'll get to it. I'm doing some of the lines and a little bit of the beginning work of uh, some of the alphas. Uh, the Wii version of the game actually was built by another studio as well and they were building some of the levels at the same time as we're building ours So that's why you see some actually different levels on that game because we were we ended up changing a lot of things in production That they continued through And also they had they didn't have the full team that we did or you know the the dexterity for the graphics or all the systems, the natural motion systems and DMM and all that all that crazy technology that we were using either. So the, the, the Nintendo Wii version was pretty different. Oh, that was for PC though, right? Sorry, Anna for? I remember hearing about that. Do programmers put in some frames? Limiting technical... Uh, I don't know what you mean, dude. <laughs> dude, we had actually a really amazing sound team on our... on the Force Unleashed. They went out and beyond to make everything unique. Like even when you're bending metal, they had all these different variations of uh, metal. And then the programmers did some amazing work too. And depending on how thick the metal was, a different sound effect would be played. And it was just like the amount of work that went into that game. It, it was quite ridiculous. The level of detail of things across the entire team. How much time? Uh, hey, proof. Oh, they can't see you in the cam, bud. Look at this. 
Found a little dog over here. What are you doing? What are you doing, crazy? What are you doing? Hey. Are you bored? I'm oh, sorry. Uh, the industry on average how much they have to finish the sculpt. Uh, it's different on the team depending on uh, how many how detailed you know the character can be in inside of the game, how many parts it has, does it have customizable sections, you know, all these things, you know, take will change things up. But for Forced Unleashed as an example, we were doing uh, one character every Uh, I think we're doing every four weeks. We're finishing a character. And then for Force Unleashed 2, I changed that to... Uh, to six weeks. And for the Gold Edition of Force Unleashed, we were actually finishing uh, new characters uh, every three weeks. We're crunching pretty hard to get all those extra costumes out so people could... Play all these different versions of like the Star Killer and the cartoon version of them. Um, uh, we had uh, C3PO in there, Qui Gon, Kid Fisto, Darth Sion. Well, this goes on. <clears throat> no, crazy. I can't right now. I can't, crazy. No. Oh, you're cute. Oh, you're cute. Oh, wet. Wet. What crazy boy. Hmm? What is it? Bazuzu. Oh, you're uh, what, uh, a seat kaka from Mojika. <laughs> Your crazy nickname, dude. Uh, from the Dota Workshop. Good set you doing there on Abaddon. Oh, thank you so much, dude. Uh, how you doing, dude? What you working on these days? You got anything you can show us and show the chat? Anything you submit it, we can throw some boots at. Help you out. We're pretty early on this sculpt here. I'm just kind of sketching some things in. Making a whole new head for him. Am I feeling nostalgic about those times? Oh, Sir, Sir, uh, all the time, all the time, man. Uh, we had an amazing team and freaking awesome people. I miss the the studio work there a lot. Best costume was Luke. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, I remember helping with uh, the, I think I did a little bit on the C brush and the texture for his outfit and the rest of that suit for, I mean, you're talking about the Empire Strikes Back, like X-Wing outfit, right? Uh, Yoon Kim was the artist that was working on that uh, and he did an amazing job. Super, super amazing character artist. Uh, thesis, it wasn't the publishers. We had no publishers, where Lucas owned everything. So it was some people... Yeah. Yeah, dude! Chocolate milk in a jugger mug. Let's see, Basusu finishing an Alchemist and an Ovni and now doing a Slardar. Oh shit. Dude, show us! Share! Let's see your work. You got any work in progresses? And when you do upload them, dude, uh, let me know and I'll put them on our Facebook page and everything and help uh, people see your work, okay? Oh, 
<laughs> oh, Basuzu, man. Uh, okay, so see this graphic uh, over here? So we just did that today so I can show people. Uh, we're trying, we're going to be pushing for a live workshop chest uh, with all those uh, sets that we're working on at the same time. Uh, besides those sets, we have a whole s chest for Star Ladder that's on hold, which holds five hero bundles with special effects and all this stuff and a full sniper hero, our set. And then we have on hold is we have a, a Queen of Pain, a Brewmaster, a Death Prophet, a Nature's Prophet, a Skywrath, an Ember Spirit, a Brewmaster, I think I might have said that already, a, a Chaos Knight, a Life Stealer, Legion Commander, Axe, Void. And some of them are like 95% done, some of them are like 20% done, and some of them are halfway done. But we, with all those other ones, we'll jump onto after we finish these guys right here. Uh, so all these guys have no special effects, no special bones or nothing, so all these guys will walk right off the bat. So that's where we're finishing these guys first. Once we finish those guys up, we'll go back to the other guys and we'll have like maybe uh, 12 or 13 sets. And we'll try and push another chest for those guys, uh, may and maybe by then Source 2 tools are out and we can do all the special effects or implement all the special effects that we already did for all those other sets which are on, uh, that we shelved for now. Uh, you mean the Lucasfilm team? The LucasArts team, Sargut? Sargut? Uh, oh yeah, man, they're all over the industry now. We have people over at Bungie, and at uh, 303, and at ILM, uh, Microsoft. Where else did people go? People went all over the place, dude. Uh, the Uncharted people, uh, who makes Uncharted? Um, where else? At Valve Software. Um, some people went to Sledgehammer, I th no not Sledgehammer, uh, they were working on some first person shooter stuff, I forget what was it, one of those other games, I forget what the name of it, some people went to EA to work on the on the new Star Wars game that they did, um, DICE and whatever, yeah, all over. 2K, a lot of people went to 2K here because it's local. And they're working on, what is it, Mafia 3, I think? Hey, Nate. And Dio. Hmm. Hmm. Am I keeping in touch? Yeah, of course, man. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm actually, uh, I was uh, one of the uh, guests on his stream while he was playing Force Unleashed and talking to different uh, dev team uh, members. Uh, so I was in there and we're talking about, you know, just some character stuff and just stories, you know, that happened during the development of Force Unleashed. Why did I work there, Angel of Death? Um, I was a character artist and then a character lead. So I would actually jump onto different parts of the team throughout production. Um, at the beginning I would help out with uh, concept art a little bit. Um, and then I jump onto the character art team and lead the character art team. Um, I, I didn't do a tons on the concept art team, I just helped a little bit while we got geared up. Uh, fucking most of the credit goes to the concept art team on their concepts because they're fucking amazing shit. Uh, then uh, while well, uh, we finished the concept art stuff, uh, or sorry, the character arts after, you know, closer to the end of production, uh, then I would jump onto the uh, the marketing team and help do the cover arts and uh, magazine covers and renders and magazine cover, you know, all, all this, this stuff for the guide and uh, the special stuff that came with the gold edition and the cover for the next stuff coming up. And what else? And oh yeah, I also jump onto some of the design meetings and throw some stuff in. That was always fun. I think I really enjoyed doing that with the team. We had some crazy awesome meetings, man. The way that that team was ran was amazing. Production was great. Oof. What do you need, man? These dogs might need to go outside. Hmm? Wanna go outside? A little shit? 
<laughs> Jesus, so yeah, gotta touch that one. Oh, finishing a game on rush just to beat our, just to come out at the same time. Yeah, that's never good. So good, yeah, dude. It was ridiculous. We actually started that team, that team from from scratch. Uh, Lucas Arts at that point had just reset before we production started on Force Unleashed, and it was like a brand new team in a brand new studio, working on brand new consoles that had just come out on a brand new engine, and uh, with brand new technologies infused into it. And yeah, everything, everything, everything was new, which was it, which made it so much more difficult and much more amazing that we finished the game how we did. Which characters did I do? Oh shit, man. Uh, I did a lot of the costumes for the hero, for Starkiller. I then helped... I think we had it, we had outsourced the Emperor, and he came back just, like, god-awful. Or something went wrong with it, where I had to jump in and redo the face and the texture on the cloth. And then I also did uh, Darth Maul and uh, Heavy Trooper. And proxy, and a lot of the a lot of the different costumes for the apprentice. Uh, that was for Force Unleashed one, and then yeah, a whole bunch of the marketing stuff, a lot of renders, and cover work. Um, and like I think five or six different downloadable hero models for the gold edition. And then for Force Unleashed 2, I did a whole bunch of other stuff. Oh, there's one right now. There's the, the first apprentice you see, the first, like, in his clone outfit. Made that guy, we sculpted the head from scratch, did all the face blends for him, the new face blends. Um, I made Darth Vader for the sequel for Force Unleashed 2. Um, uh, Darth Scion, Kid Fisto, cartoon apprentice in Clone Wars style. What else? Oh, there's a whole bunch I'm sure that I'm forgetting. Hey Nick, what's up? And Fanders. A friend of yours is going to FCD Design School in Singapore. How good do you think the school is for concept artists? That's the... Is that the Feng, Feng Zhu Design School? Is that what that is? The Feng Zhu School? Uh, the guy's really, 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 he knows his, his, his stuff, man, for, for concept art. And he can paint, like, you know, he like his main strength is, like, designing on the go and painting all that stuff in perspective. And uh, getting that stuff done fast is really, really difficult. And he has a lot of understanding of the rules behind the sign. So, and, I mean, learning the perspective from that guy, if your friend is into that kind of stuff, learning that stuff from him is going to be uh, really, really, really useful. If you are talking about Feng Zhu. I think that's those are the initials. I forget. You might be talking about a different school, and I'm giving you total useless information right now. Uh, Shakti, I only did the render for Shakti, and I made a higher poly version slightly from it. But I used uh, Craig Matchett's initial model from the game uh, to make to start the the higher polygon one that I made. Oh, thank you so much, Angel of Death. That means a lot. Cliptic, yep, that's him. Oh yeah, well there you go. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I, I don't think there's like another huge school there that people would know as, as, as well, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Feng Su's. I forget the initials though, the initials sound a little bit off, but I'm, I'm, I took a guess. Uh, Alright, let me go take the dog outside, guys. I'm gonna get another drink. My mug is almost empty. And we'll come back and we'll keep... We'll, maybe we can finish this freaking cape. It's looking pretty beat up already. And I don't know, we still need to finesse a lot of these curves in the back. 
they're they're really not even yeah maybe halfway there but yeah they're they're still pretty sloppy uh when we come back we'll continue doing that stuff guys don't go away i'll go put this dog outside Hey Safu, what's up man? Alright guys, I'll be right back. Here, I'll just leave the screen up. I won't put on the break screen. This is... It'll be fine. You guys will be fine, right? Alright, oh, Jesus, come here. Come here. Let everybody see what a needy dog looks like. This is a needy dog right here. Here we go outside. Ah, fuck. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Give me that nose. Give me that nose. Rah, 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 rah. Alright, buddy. I'm gonna throw him on the bed. <laughs> he flew. Alright, we'll be right back. All right. Oh. <laughs> There's a guy with a big chair with a throne. Does he fly with the throne around or what? I don't think I've seen that character. Always comes back to the chair. Do 
I have a portfolio. Uh, yeah, I usually have, I have my website, artbymanny.com, but it's actually down at the moment. Unfortunately, man, sorry. Alright, let's continue with this freaking cave. <clears throat> it's a little bit weird in some places here. And we must fix them. Oops. There. Reinforce that a little bit later. Some more play in there. But I'm just gonna move on, get the big parts done first. I can go in and detail and smooth out and reposition some of these guys. I'm really just interested in the big changes and what's gonna show up for our texture and what's gonna give us a really good starting point for me to actually start doing the paint over uh, by hand in Photoshop. And make it, uh, you know, painting all those gradients and start making it look really nice and painterly. It's uh, kind of like the style we need. What is this? I'm changing it. <laughs> yeah, not not crazy hardcore techno. You should have some chill music, bro. Chill music. I might have the thing just for you, man.
We need more polygons for this section. More Vesmu, I guess. So when we subdivide, we'll, we'll be able to make this part a little bit pretty. But the rest, yeah, I'll just kind of smooth out and make it clear which parts are going to be our office down here. A little sketchy. As I can through this stuff here. Maybe we can get to the shoulder soon. Been eyeing that shoulder for a while. A while. Looking sharper. Slowly getting there. I know that when we first started and you guys just saw like the, just a really quick standard brush that we were using just to make the initial spot it was looking really rough but you, you know you gotta you gotta make your your c brush look really crappy in the first passes of your subdivision just so you can get those volumes in and then you, you make it look really really nice after that keep refining it with really good initial volumes and the sign lines. The game journey has an yeah, um, and I'm not sure if I can play that though. It might mute our stream for the past broadcast. So I only play stuff that I've licensed myself or stuff that has no copyright. Uh, but yeah, for example, these Ronald Junkies that you're listening to right now, I've actually licensed it through him. So I can play it as much as I want for you guys here on the stream. And it's not gonna mute anything on the past broadcast when we upload all these videos to our website so people can continue learning. They miss the life stuff. With the seabrush, lower the subdivision every time I move the camera just so that it, you can see the frame rate a little bit faster of the actual movement. If you kept all the polygons in view, it would actually do it slower and chug. So it's a little bit of a, a speed up for your workflow, so you don't have to be waiting for your system to catch up, trying to move all those polygons. So it goes to a lower subdivision, just for that viewport while you move your model around or zoom in or zoom out. really normal for when you're using high meshes even in other programs you can set it up to just be like the the bounding box of your overall mesh so you can move around a lot faster in huge scenes for for film or something like that things of those natures Subdivisions for this section here, so I won't do too much with it. Keep somewhere else. Standard YouTube license? I don't know. I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. 
Colonel Space, what's up, man? There's a little bit here and there. Or at least as much as we can do with this subdivision before we move to other sections and come back when we have more sub these here and can really make this stuff shine and look a little bit rough right now but that's and I'll be smooth out this is all gonna be alpha probably um, um. we're gonna be alpha go into this little corner here this little, little sprite This is the other big pieces actually. Getting caught up in the little details that I'm dying to do and I shouldn't do them right now. This guy's really, really powerful across the shoulder here. Strong and sharp. A little bit of a cut here. this line into the inside of this one I think. Add your brush, these are to do big sections and also to flatten your curves. I'm gonna use flatten first. Back. Okay. With this brush. Getting touchy next to the other other polygons over there. Alright, that shoulder's looking a lot better now. Pretty messed up in here. I might need to push some of those guys a little bit farther in too. Let's see if I can, I can force these guys to the curve that I want. Not into the curve that they deserve. Let's push this guy in. Nice shadow in there. Whoa, <laughs> that brush is huge for this top section. inside section. It's pretty rough. Let's save our model. Uh, I can play it on YouTube and Twitch without it being muted. 
circuit? Is that what he's in? Check it out. Oh man, if I get muted because of the fucking ad. I don't know what the fuck that was, like fucking Taylor Swift or some shit. Snap block. I know, guys. I know. I just. I don't know. I don't like you, snap block. You have not worked in a studio before, but you're looking at possibly joining one. Dude, I mean, I, I worked in studios all my life, or all my professional life, most of it anyways. Um, and I, I loved working in a, in a studio environment, you know, especially... Um, I, I've, I've always worked on projects that I really, really loved. So I never joined a studio for the hell of joining a studio. Uh, I never switched to a team or anything like that unless I really lo liked uh, you know, the, the plays, the people, and the game that we're going to be making. So, if you, uh, if you're able to choose that, well, is that really loud? Crap. Um, if you have, I guess, the luxury at this point to be able to choose those things, then it's, it's freaking awesome. Uh, especially if you're working with awesome, talented people, you can learn from stuff and teach some stuff too at the same time. It's even more rewarding that way. And I mean, no place is gonna be like perfect or, you know, it's every place is gonna have some things that you might not love or, you know, um, agree with or whatever it is, but um, some amazing studios to work for out there. Oh wow, that really took on some fucking volume, didn't it? Yeah, let's undo that, because that was crap. I need another subdivision, I think, before I, we do them. Uh, these little metal loops that I want to do. I'll just kind of brush it in as a placeholder. Yeah, this one was freaking tiny. Uh, let's undo that. I'll make a big one here. Um, I gotta be honest, I'm not in love with this song. I mean, the, the, the beat part is okay. But just the guy's voice is like burping. It's kinda... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about this. <laughs> I need more polygons for this section. Okay, we're just having to. Brush it in a little bit right now. Oh, that's a cool beat right now. Yeah, dude, I don't know about this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I tried.
what is the character for? Uh, this is going to be for Dota 2, for this Abaddon set that we're creating. So let me show you, this is the in-game Abaddon character right now in Dota 2. And this is what you're going to be able to change it to by the time we're done with it. Because this has no textures or anything on it, but right now we're sculpting the high poly patch that will eventually bake onto this and then do our textures on top of that. So that's what we're doing, we're going to make this, uh, this cursed prince right here. Uh, so it looks very, very, very different to the default. Uh, looks like that. Hey, where's the little otherness? Oh, but yeah, he's got a crown on there. It's just that we're sea brushing it so that you can actually see it on there. I should bring that over, just for the sake of being able to see it. Where are you? Are you mirrored? Oh my god, you are. Okay. Put it at zero there. Just so people can see it on this view. Let's see, he's a little prince crown or king crown. I'm not sure what we're gonna go with yet. Epic music? Oh man, that's not a bad idea. Skinning and rigging as well? Oh yeah, oh, um, I don't think we've skinned this guy yet, or Abyss FX, our lab workshop here is uh, our TD, so he's going to be skinning it to the skeleton of Abaddon. Uh, right now we've only skinned the horse and we actually already submitted the, the mount. So right now we're doing the rest of the set to go along with it. Uh, this game just needs a lot of work still. I might have done too many circles down here. Try and uh, finesse some of these guys to some nicer, distinct, more interesting shapes maybe. side something like hmm get it from here and we'll go all the way to the tip a bit pretty thin I think wonder if we should eat even more alphas on this side like if we do something Pretty crazy, like. That. I guess then, would that be too much? I think that's cooler, actually. Having more of Trump top than actually following the shape so closely. Uh, I'm gonna go with this one. Uh, I'll build it up a little bit more again to get nicer shapes, but I think this is a better starting point. But I like, I like all the raggedness to it and uh, all the, the negative space that we're gonna be getting from this. Especially since we have another another layer underneath that we really want to show, especially in, including the horse. All the detail that we did on the horse. So having more, more alphas and more eaten up sections into the cape itself, I think is a good thing. Well, let's let's be more aggressive with our alphas. I'll just start eating up into all of these guys. Get the alpha to run all the way up here too.
thin out some of this tape too, at the same time. Oh yeah, that starts layering really nice actually, if we have all that stuff as alpha. And we can continue that aggressiveness even all the way up here. And get, make these guys larger. That alpha. piece. Maybe we're gonna split this guy up too. Into another big opening. I think the raggedy, the super raggedy route is, is a lot smarter for our design here. We're gonna close this off here because it was a little too much. Not doing us any favors. And really rip this guy up here and down here. And what I like to do too is uh, actually add a little bit of depth before I actually do the alpha from black and white into the alpha texture section of it. And that way we actually get the bake from the inside of some of this cloth. So we add some girth to our super flat polygon. So we, we add a volumes to it even though it's just a quad by sculpting in the sides of the wraps and this, this raggedy bits. Ends up working really, really nicely. See, like up here, this part is going to be actually visible. This part's going to be off in here. It worked great. We need to get, make it a little more tethering, I think. And again, that's something that we can also push into our texture in Photoshop. If it doesn't work out for whatever reason too well, we can go in there and just cut it out even a little bit stronger. Just with black and white in the, in the, in the alpha mask. We, can, we have full control over that, so... It's cake. I think we start seeing a way more interesting shape already. From that being ripped up so much. And we can even put uh, maybe one of those stitches that we need to really finesse later. Uh, we can even bring them around down here. Oh. Nice metal ring there. Make it look pretty later. So that's something's holding this tighter bits together. And we have another one over here too. Make it attach with a little bit of raggedy cloth down here. And then we go back into the alpha. Yeah, I'll finesse it. I'll make it look nice later. I just don't have the polar count for it right now, but I know that that's, that's going to be a ring right there. That's going to be a ring right there. Got a few rings up here. And push those guys across every now and then. And even we push them up here a little bit. Pretty crappy, but okay. Make it look cool later. Don't worry, don't worry about it, we can do it. Just a placeholder. And we'll make the little section around it kind of bulge out, you know, so you can see the little ring kind of coming out of it and everything. Just can't do it right now. I really want to. Let's see if I work.
Stay awake for 36 hours? Holy shit, Lin, how come? You're only halfway there? Why are you staying up for, for so long? Uh, Opal Mecca, welcome, thank you for the follow. This mesh is already UV'd, yeah. Yeah, it's already UV'd and the volumes and everything are already in place. So we're just doing the the, uh, the detail, each subdivision, export it out, <clears throat> decimate it, and go straight into baking. And then we'll go into texturing. Oh, the camera. Need to push his monitors back. Oh, did you guys notice I fixed the little the blinking on my shirt, the little like little dots because of the green screen kind of stuff. Good now, yeah. Only halfway there <laughs> since you're living on a prayer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, Lynn. That's gonna be tough. I really wanted those rings, but I can't right now. Actually, I don't even like this ring up here. It looks... I don't know, contradicting to the volumes? Something? Gotta figure something else out. Down here or something. See you later. And I'll put into the shadows back here somewhere. Might be kind of cool. A little different, more depth. We shadow it a little bit at the same time. Sounds like a winning plan. Uh, let's see, let's see. Let me bring up the whole thing and hide the shoulders. I'm also gonna hide the mount. Please. And let's see back here. How's this looking? It's actually not bad. One right in there. Uh, maybe I actually wanna pull these guys up a little bit more. Actually, I think I can alpha that stuff out. Uh, let me look at the low poly mesh. Let me see, let me see. Where do you guys end up? Right up to the ledge. Hmm. So I might be able to actually pull these guys up. After we bake, I don't want to mess with it right now, obviously. But if we like, pull these guys up a little bit and pull them out, uh, we can have the alpha eat up away part of the mesh and have the round sections actually look like they're going into, into that ledge right there. Or we're trying to fake it, you know, make it look like it's going in there. So there's little little things that I can do with the low poly still after the bake that I can make this thing look even more accurate. So we would do essentially this in, with the low poly because this will already be baked. So we bring these guys up here. So it looks like they're overlapping and actually coming out of that section. Right? But we, we, we don't want to do that right now. We want to bake it like this because this will line up perfectly with our low polygon. And then the low poly, we just grab those, those edges and we just pull them up a little bit. And it's a win. Mysterious blank. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, I, uh, you can customize the color scheme for your uh, for your uh, keyboard. So I have like a lighter light blue for the inside keys for the actual letters, and then uh, like a harsher, darker blue for uh, everything around it. And they change color when you hit them and everything. It's all this like <laughs> totally useless but cool looking shit. People beginning in ZBrush, uh, Balto man, I don't have any tutorials that really that I've looked at myself that I can sh shoot your way, dude. Uh, what I can say is just look at like you know how people uh, begin their models and the steps that they take to get to the high poly and the detailed stuff. So watch our past broadcasts, look videos on YouTube, and just look at the steps that people take to get to where they are. Don't try to do everything too early on your in your subdivisions, or you're gonna get into trouble. It's gonna be harder.
If I bake this, will this look the same with uh, to the low poly? Yeah, that's the idea. We wanna we're, we're gonna bring this into uh, like a normal map and uh, curvature maps, ambient occlusion, shadow maps, light maps, etc. So that we can do our texture over top of that, like we did with our mount. And then once in game, we then apply a whole bunch of materials that control the shininess, the reflections, the rim lighting, the self illumination, all these other little tricks that make it look like the actual materials inside of the game, whether they're metal, wood, you know, reflective, self illuminated, like the eyes and the mouth. And this, you know, these, these things actually glow inside of the game by using those masks. So a lot of other steps still need to happen before we get in game. I would make it look really, really nice, but uh, this is a really important step: is making all this nice detail and bake it, bake all those other materials that I spoke about onto. Uh, different textures they use them in game that's a little crazy <clears throat> all right let's continue with escape starting to take some shape let me flatten this bastard out I wanted to follow that line gonna be a good one And I need to move this guy's add a little bit. Like, curve actually follows where I wanted to go with this H polish. There we go. Here we come back. Cooperate, ZBrush. Or my video card, I don't know which one's having a problem with it. here so I'm gonna push it back to so get a more of a streamlined fold there we're starting to get a nice gradient of uh, the crepitness and our alpha mask towards the top he might be getting a little full here I might eat up into this guy more alphas five Delta okay, what do we do with you and that part doesn't even look that good Skinnier equals creepier. out this section mm, something's up here Look right within <laughs> maybe we will join the nova over here and get this, some of this thickness back on the opposite side Pull these guys together a little bit more, that's all. Looks pretty okay, I think. But we'll keep this guy in shadow because that, that was a good idea. Keep this thickness here. And that 
this little bit will actually be a, a that little chain link holding these two pieces together a little bit. You guys get cut up, ripped apart. Open up a room here. Yeah, that's that's a little better. These guys need to be a little bit thicker down here. Otherwise, it looks way too separated. We stitch them back a little bit. And we'll work how that goes into that little chain link part. That's that's reading a lot better, I think. Especially with the two other layers we're gonna have underneath there. As you can see down here. These two guys are gonna be underneath. A whole bunch of other the carpetness going on. So having this guy be really thin, it's a good thing. You'll you'll see this guys and then. If those guys are also ripped up a little bit, you'll be able to see all that nice detail that we did on the horse too. And those greens, we want those greens to show up a little bit more than just covering it all up with a cape, uh, like the default has, you know. I want to show some of that horse a bit more. The horse is a really important part of our set. That was a sword. It looks like a lot of uh, or oh, paler lines on those folds would be nice to overlap them. Uh, well, I usually do, but uh, we actually want these folds to read more royal. So a lot of royal capes actually have that kind of motion going on. And then as we go farther away from them, then I started overlapping them and curl it, curling them across and folding over and ripping them up and all this stuff. But for the top, I, did, I do want that, that parallel look to it. Because this is going to be for our like cursed king or prince. We're not sure what we're going to make them yet. But he's got his little uh, crown, his uh, royal armor going on. Uh, he's like an undead, you know, cursed, you know, to ride forever killing or I don't know, whatever we come up with. Uh, but yeah, we definitely want those those royal kind of cape lines going down. They kind of rhyme with the hair too of how, how many... You know, straight lines we have going down there, even though we are overlapping a lot on the hair. And we haven't even really finished the hair, but, you know, it starts echoing a little bit of the hair as well. And kind of that, that uh, very uh, flowing direction for the set at the same time. Especially, with, like I said, with the second secondary cloth piece underneath. It's gonna be cool. Get a lot of... Uh, a lot of movement out of the sculpt, even when he's standing still. Mabo, thank you for following. Welcome. And eventually we have to get over here too and start ripping the crap out of this guy. How much do we rip up? A lot. Uh, it's so difficult getting started on how, like, deciding where to rip up your mesh. Because I mean, uh, it actually looks fairly nice right now. I mean, we didn't really stylize it too much or really sculpt, you know, too many nice folds back here on purpose because we're gonna be ripping it up. Uh, but I don't know. Some of those, like, the flat volumes speak a lot on the. The type of cloth that it is, the thickness to it. And then ripping it up on top of that makes it really difficult to keep that visual language there. Oh, and 
Maybe we make this guy more round. Let's try sketching it a little bit. Make this guy have this nice little like overlapping curves even. Even over the alpha, maybe we can make this guy kinda go over top. And we can get uh, like extra extra fancy with our alpha maps here. But we have this guy kinda maybe it's even still hanging on to the other piece. For dear life. Here somewhere. Very, very thin. And maybe even a thinner one down here. Just sketch this stuff in, see if it works out. Then we start putting our alpha way down here. Don't go too deep. We know that other mesh is down there, but we know that this is gonna be off right in there. Uh, so this cloth piece is the one we wanted to kind of pull across. Uh, over here somewhere. Uh, we can make it look prettier later, too. I don't worry about it too much right now. Because the initial sculpt is there for us to follow through with. That lies said a little bit later as well. Baking pancakes, making bacon pancakes. Takes a bacon and I'll put it in a pancake. <laughs> hey Jamba Kiko, how pancakes, you doing, bud? That's what it's gonna make bacon pancakes. Baking pancakes, making bacon pancakes. Takes a bacon and I'll put it in a pancake. Baking pancakes, that's what it's gonna make bacon pancakes. Welcome, Jamba Kiko. Twelfth, dude, that that is your whole round there, right there. Twelve months in a row. You're straight, man. Thank you so much for the support. Really, really appreciate it, man. The man. So he's been waiting for that pancake song for about four hours. <laughs> Watch modeling the modeling state for the bacon. <laughs> I need to make those emoticons. Oh my god. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that soon. Chad man, I'm gonna make that tonight. No, maybe not tonight, because we're gonna be working on this for a bit still. Let me ask this to the new people that joined us tonight. Um, the progress bar over here is has that been like is that something cool that you guys found interesting when you joined in? Is that does that make a sense at all to somebody that maybe that's not even from Dota? Do you guys like that? Was that a good thing that we did today? I'm interested. I mean, we can make the graphic better. I can't, we kind of like made it kind of fast, messing around with the Photoshop file and looking for all the images for the icons and everything. But we can make that prettier. Up here. The mouse, why is it rolling around? Uh, do you like working at night? At night time, or is it like yeah? It's 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 three twenty-five in the morning right now. Uh, I'm a little bit of a night owl. I. I tried to stream earlier, and every now and every now and then we fixed our schedule here. Uh, we stream a lot earlier, um, but then sometimes we I just get too busy and it's like, oh man, we got we got to stream. Uh, like tonight, I jumped on like at what time was it? Oh man, like 
10? At, no, oh my god, it was, it was midnight. I was I wanted to start at like at 9, and then I, I got busy with other stuff. And then, yeah, we started at, at midnight tonight. Tomorrow, tomorrow will be a lot earlier. Same as last words. Bacon pancakes? I thought it was bacon pancakes. No, dude, it's making bacon pancakes. Making bacon pancakes. Grab some bacon and you put it in the pancake. That's what it's gonna make. Bacon pancake. That's what we need. The, we need the the icon. I need to make the icon of uh, like bacon, like pancakes with bacon, kind of coming out of them, because they're mixed together. That's the whole thing of making bacon pancakes. You don't just throw it on top. You mix it into the batter, and you 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 know you make the bacon pancakes. <laughs> Didn't play Dota for about five to six years, but yeah, it's cool. Hmm. Knife oil. Oh, thanks, dude. Yeah, dude, watch past broadcasts. We got like the entire process pretty much for a whole bunch of different sets. And right now we're working on five sets at the six sets at the same time. I'm just gonna call it six sets. The curious included in there. It's a set. And that uh, you can barely see that shit. So you, are you on mobile or like a tablet or something? Because if you're a PC, I, I tried it out and it was it was legible. But, I mean, that's one of the things that I want to test it out when we press put it up, is if people could read it. I'm sure people on iPhone or whatever is going to be tough, but maybe for PC people it might be still still be alright. Pancakes? No, no, no pancakes. <laughs> He's finished Gyrocopter? No, Gyrocopter is on the... See if we can see the our image here. Here, check this out. Uh, we're about a quarter of the way in with the textures for Gyrocopter. So, you know, once we pass that next line, then the textures will be complete, and we'll be working into the materials. Is that not clear? The bar? The bar system? Like, the, the white lines? That was pretty... Yeah, no, that makes sense, right? I mean, you go over it, then means it's finished. Come on! Come on! I've never made bacon, like, you know, the bacon in the pancakes either. Chocolate chips I have, but not bacon pancakes. And that's I think that's something that we should also try. Do I like Adventure Time? I do like Adventure Time. <laughs> and what's up, Confrontation? This is for work, indeed, yippee. Or... Yep, yep. 